Talked to Coach uh, coming out of the locker rooms at halftime. He said he was very proud of his team uh, in the first half. Defense came real good. The special teams exciting, he said, coming up in this half. The opposite score. They got some points on the board and got to get active and got to score quick. All right, so Jackson State will kick it away, kicking from left to right. As all corner will feel, they have a uh, pair of defenders down at the five-yard line. It's fielded by Joe Price. He's up to the 10, 15. Price is brought down at the 25-yard line by none other than Javancy Jones. Yeah, he did a good job on covering the kick that time. Javancy Jones got down, made that tackle, man. It's, boy, he's always shook up. You know, anytime he makes a lot of contact, he's always come out the field with some kind of ailment. So what he's still, he's in the game where he played, though. So Alcorn will start first and 10 from its own 24-yard line. Javancy Jones is the Jackson State uh, representative for the Connolly Trophy, which will be given away on Tuesday night. We say congratulations to Javancy Jones. I don't think nobody else on the team deserves that other than him. I don't know. Who else? Oh, well, Terrell had a good year, and I don't know. <laughs> All right, so on first and 10, Alcorn will go with the Screen pass along the left side. The catch is made. A pickup of 14 up to the 39-yard line. Yeah, that's a wolf again. They like to get the ball to him, number 10, for Alcorn State. Uh, he's a playmaker, and every time they can get the ball to him, they will. Line, first and 10. Second down for the Braves. They are on the move as we open up the third quarter of play. This is where Alcorn is very dangerous here in the second half. They can score a lot of points in the second half. So whatever Coach Hobson tells his team at the break, it works. Footman remains in at quarterback. He's going to hand it off to Ragsdale. And not much there for Ragsdale as he is brought down by Tedrick Terrell and Stacy Noble after a pickup of one yard. Yeah, that's been working good for Jack State. The defensive end has been keeping the plays in and not letting them get to the outside. Then linebackers are filling in and making the tackles. Man, doing a good job with that all day today. Pickup of two yards. Up to the 42-yard line. It is second down and eight for Alcorn. Footman remains in at quarterback. He's going to hand it off. A big hole up the middle by Ragsdale. He leaps a defender and takes it into Jackson State territory at the Tiger 43-yard line. What well, a play you know, by Ragsdale. Well, you know Ragsdale come to play every time he played Jackson State from this area. So he's going to give everything he got, man. He's, he's on the move. Oh, that's a highlight right there. A uh, first down run by Ragsdale. They have it in Jackson State's territory at the Tiger 42. Again, they go with the ground game. And another, uh, it's going to be close to the first down as Footman yeah, keeps Footman, it on that play. Yeah, Footman kept the ball himself that time, and that's what he can do. He's not a passer, Footman, the quarterback for Alcorn State. He's a real runner. That's what he is. They have it second down and four at the Jackson State 37-yard line. Footman is going to keep it again after he fakes the Ragsdale. Footman is brought down, but he picks up the first down at the JSU 30. We had the same play that time. Fake the Ragsdale going to the right. And uh, Footman carried himself the quarterback of Alcorn stay brave. Anytime Ragsdale is you know, going anywhere around the football, everybody's going to be uh, he gets your attention because you make sure he's a great runner. No doubt about that. Alcorn quickly up the field as they have it at the Jackson State 30-yard line. Lenoris Footman, the quarterback, in the shotgun. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Footman rolls to his right. Terrell chasing. Footman throws incomplete. Yeah, he's not. He's on, on the run. Footman's not a great passer. He's missed about four or five passes here today. But uh, he's the kind of guy that you got to contain and not let him get upfield because he can run. Boy, Tedrick Terrell playing a fantastic ball game today. He returned a fumble 27 yards for a touchdown, which was the only touchdown of the game for Jackson State. Third quarter just underway. Alcorn has it second down and 10 from the Jackson State 30-yard line. Braves trail by three, but on the move. Footman, the quarterback, in the shotgun. Jackson State showing blitz. And they're going to hand it off. And big run that time by the Braves as they take it near the 20-yard line. Yeah, good handoff. Straight handoff to inside that time. The back of the Braves just broke it to the outside. Good blocking at the point of attack in order for a pick up some good yards by the running back of Alcorn State. Aaron Baker, the runner on that play for the Braves, as he takes it to the JSU 21-yard line. It is second down and one for the Braves. They fake it to Baker. Footman throws. It's almost intercepted again. Yeah, I tell you what, Footman had a lot of gas on that ball that time, and I don't know if anybody could have caught that pass. He threw it a little too hard for being that close to the receiver. They are showing fourth down and one. They're going to go for it. 
They have it fourth and one from the 21 yard line of Jackson State. Alcorn is going to go for it here. They bring out that big old package. Footman gives it to Baker, and Baker picks up the first down as he picks his way inside the 15 down to the JSU 11 before being tackled by Sean Bishop. You know, they ran away from where the big package with the big package on the right side. They came to the weak side of the field, and the back uh, fake to the inside, got to the outside, uh, picked up first down for Alcorn State. So first down for the Braves at the Jackson State 12-yard line. Under 12 to go here in the third quarter. Ragsdale now back in the backfield with Footman. Footman back in the shotgun. And they fake it to Ragsdale. And Footman is going to be pushed out of bounds by Jeminson at about the six-yard line. You know, the receiver that time on that side, Rob, when uh, Footman came, came out, the quarterback all Alcorn State, he thought he was going to throw the ball to him. He was down the end zone waiting for it. But uh, Footman kept the ball himself, the quarterback of Alcorn State. This is the 11th play of this drive for the Braves. That start back at the 24-yard line. It is second down and about four for Alcorn. They can pick up the first down at the JSU two-yard line. They have it at the Tigers' six. Footman again back in the shotgun. Ragsdale motions to his right. They fake it to Ragsdale, and Footman is in trouble. And there's going to be a face mask on Jack. Well, they didn't throw the flag. Footman. Fights out of the tackle. He's pushed out of bounds. I thought it may be a face mask penalty, but I don't think Terrell may have grabbed it. Well, Terrell had him back there, and he just couldn't hold on to him. Uh, Footman's a great runner, man. He's more of a runner than passer. That's the second time I think uh, Javancy Jones had him once and couldn't hold on to him. Well, the flag is down on the play, and this could be face masking on Terrell. Personal foul, face mask. Well, Number right. 41, defense. Half the distance wow. to the goal line, automatic first down. I tell you, this guy Footman, man, you just grab anything you can to try to contain this guy. Sammy had to grab that face mask, and it was called. Yeah, you don't want to do that this close to the end zone because that puts the football half the distance of the goal. So, hey, we're right here. They've got a first down and goal from about the two-yard line, and uh, they're just going to try to bruise it on in there. You got three backs in the backfield for the Braves. Footman in the shotgun and look at this Ragsdale move yeah. before the snap of the football and the flag is down. Yeah, Footman took Ball a long start. time. Number 22, offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, Footman took a long time calling that play that time. And Ragsdale was going to get the ball, I think. And uh, he just got in a hurry. False start called on Ragsdale. It's going to back him up to the seven yard line. So first and goal for the Braves from the Jackson State 7. Three backs in the backfield. You got Baker, you got Ragsdale, <laughs> and you got Brandon Campbell. And they're going to keep Footman keeps it. Yeah, he's he brought down. Fake to the outside. He kept it himself to quarterback. And uh, Jackson State, good job staying at home that time. Stopped him from going into the end zone. Keontre Anderson on the tackle for Jackson State. So it's going to be second down and goal now for the Braves. This is the 13th play of this drive. Alcorn eating up a lot of clock here. And this time Ragsdale is brought down by Javancy Jones again. Yeah, he's right there waiting for him, I'll tell you that. Javancy Jones with the tackle, bringing up third and goal. This would be a very fantastic goal line stand if Jackson State can stop him two more plays. You're exactly right, Rob. I think uh, well, if we stop one play, they might try to field goal, but maybe not. The JSU fans urging on the defense, saying shut them down, all court. Back now at the seven-yard line. Footman back in the shotgun. Footman takes a snap. Still handoff. Footman is going to keep it, and Footman is going to throw in the end zone. Incomplete. Boy, he had him open that time, but Footman running to his left, man, and couldn't get this guy's a magician. You can't tackle him, but he can't throw. And that's the good thing about it. He can't throw the ball at all. <laughs> Sam, what a goal line stand by Jackson State. The defense holds once again. And, uh, you know, that's what you like to see from your defense. Put a lot of pressure on him. He tried to scramble and tried to throw it, but you're exactly right. He can't throw too much at all. So he don't have a lot of pinpoint accuracy, and that's going to work in Jackson State. All right. McGraney is on to attempt 
what would be a 24 yard field goal. He missed one from 27 yards in the second quarter. And this will be right down the middle. Eight seconds on the play clock, down to six, down to five. There's a snap. It is up. It's long enough. And it's no good. He missed it again. Oh, sure did. Wow. Jackson State maintains a 10-7 lead with 8.55 to go here in the third quarter. Back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. Hope Credit Union is making financial dreams come true for many residents in the Mid-South. Once you become a member of Hope, you gain access to a team of friendly, experienced professionals who take time to listen to your needs and to find the right solutions just for you. Are you ready to become a member of a family dedicated to fixing problems and providing opportunities? Visit HopeCU.org today. That's HopeCU.org. Hope Credit Union. Better banking, better lives. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing lender. When you're looking for your happy place, there's only one place you need to go. Riverwalk Casino Hotel. Enjoy thousands of square feet filled with all your favorite slots and table games. Then savor the freshest flavors in Vicksburg with delicious restaurants like Magnolia Hill Buffet, Rockies, and Smiley's. And when you need a break from all the excitement, relax in one of our comfortable hotel rooms right off the casino floor. Find everything you love and more at Riverwalk Casino Hotel. Vicksburg's happy place. Must be 21 to gamble. Eight forty-eight to go. Are you away? More Cal. It went deep down the left side. The pass was incomplete, and they're going to give it to Mole this time. And Mole takes the handoff. Mole across the twenty-five, across the thirty, and he is run out of bounds. Actually, that's that's not Mole. That is Bates. Yeah, Bates broke, carry. broke to the outside. Good blocking on the right side of the offensive line. And uh, once he got to the outside, picked up the first down. So Jackson State with the first down run. Robert Johnson not in the game for the Tigers because of the injury to his shoulder. Eight twenty-nine to go here in the third quarter. Jackson State clinging to a 10-7 lead. Two missed field goals by Hayden McRaney. Jackson State with it first and 10 from its own 35-yard line. Morikawa remains in at quarterback for the JSU Tigers. And they go with the jet sweep to Mole, and Not Mole there. is dropped down right at the line of scrimmage. Well, that's going to be hard to run there because all Oklahoma State run the same offense with the jet sweep. So that means those guys see it in practice every day. So they were waiting for that uh, for no game prior loss in the other that play. This is the last game of the year for Jackson State, and they're going out with a bang. They lead Alcorn 10 to 7. Alcorn leads a swack in scoring average. They average about 40 points a game. Right now, they're only held to 7. But the Braves offense has not scored at all. And a flag is down. This could be a false start on the Tigers. Exactly right. Part, number 79, offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Nice crowd here at Memorial Stadium. Jackson State with a 10 7 lead over the Braves. So it's second down and 15. More Cowan remains in at quarterback. Lamontez Ivy was injured late in the year and has not returned. So More Cowan steps up, fires. It is. Did he catch that? What a catch yeah. by Dan Williams to the 40 yard line with three guys draped all over him. Well, Dan Williams can do that. Got great hands at that time. McCowan put it in there between those guys. Had three defensive backs, two backs, and a linebacker there. And Dan Williams came up with the pass. He, great catch that by Dan Williams. It was a small gain on the play, though. It's going to bring up third down and seven. Go back to him again. Now they got third down and 15 on the school. Who's running the school board? Oh, they must be at some other game. Somebody must be from Greenville. <laughs> Is that where you're from? Yeah, probably from the yeah. <laughs> Third and seven. Morikawa back in the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. He throws down the left side. And it is incomplete, but a flag yeah. down. He was looking for Dan Williams. And a flag is down. This could be against the all-court. Yeah, that's what you got to do, Rob. You know, Dan Williams is too great a receiver not to throw the ball to him at least 15, 20 times a game. 
Get it back to him, man. This guy can't cover him. And I don't know why to keep on the long pass. Get it some short. Pass interference. Number 21, defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. That penalty on Quentin can too for Alcorn. He's a he's a really good defensive back. He's out of Beaumont, yeah. Texas. He's a senior. Yeah, he's and, been uh, for a while. They, they're going to miss him. They're going to miss Cantu. I like the way he plays. Yeah, I know you would. <laughs> but on that last play, he was trying to hold <laughs> off Dan Williams. And I, th I don't think he would have caught the ball anyway, but uh, he didn't know that. I mean, but, I mean, you know, to, to be honest, I mean, I'm really proud of what Alcorn has done, man. I mean, they, they, they were down a few years ago, uh, and, you know, they were ridiculed. But you know all the time they had a good team. They got a lot of tradition at Alcorn, and now it's it's back, and they're winning this back here at Alcorn. Well, we're going to come back. Uh, Jackson, we're going to get that back. So first down and 10 for Jackson State. They have it at Alcorn's 47-yard line as Bates makes the run and picks up a few yards on that carry. Great run by Bates that time. Got hit at the line of scrimmage, but, it, you know, one thing about Bates is a downhill runner, man. He's still found a way uh, to pick up some yards for Jackson State. Second down and five after that pickup of five by Bates to the Alcorn 42-yard line. Derek McCall, his future uncertain here as interim head coach at Jackson State, but he is certainly going out with a bang. More Cowell with plenty of time. Fires across the middle. The catch is made down at the 25. That's Mole, and he is brought down inside the 25, down to the Alcorn 22. Well, I give the offensive line a lot of credit, but they gave uh, McCowie a lot of time to throw their football and caught Mole across the middle that time. He threw a strike in there for a big first down play. 5.42 to go and counting. Alcorn letting this team hang in and hang around and hang around. Jackson State chewing up that clock as they continue to move the football. They have it closer and closer to the red zone. It is first down and 10 for the Tigers at the Alcorn 24. Make it the 23. Morikawa back in the shotgun, takes a snap, throws a screen pass. It is intercepted. Intercepted. He threw it right into the hands of the Alcorn defensive lineman. And Alcorn will stop that drive, and the Braves will have it at the 45-yard line. Well, just a bad break that time, Rob. Uh, the defensive line was right in position that time to intercept that pass, and the Cowboy just didn't get it over his head, man. he got to get up. We have an injured JSU player on the field. We'll take a timeout. The Braves get the ball back after the interception. Back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. Following the interception on first down, Alcorn will give it to Ragsdale, and he will run along the right side trying to turn the corner, and he is brought down by Sean Bishop, but not after picking up nine yards on that play. Well, Ragsdale, he's some kind of running back. Uh, got to it, I said, made contact, but he kept going, uh, kept going and kept going and picked up, like you say, nine yards on that particular play. Game, first and 10, Richard says 10. So they give him a first down on the 10-yard run. They have it at Jackson State's 46-yard line. Again, they go with Ragsdale. Ragsdale around the right side. Ragsdale powering his way, knocking over JSU helmets as he takes it to the JSU 30-yard line. Yeah, I guess Ragsdale said he'll enough of this mess, man. He's running real hard now, and <laughs> he, he's trying to get into the end zone. Sam Alcorn moving the ball quite well on this drive. They are moving it quite well uh, after that new life. So they're... First down and 10, Alcorn at the Jackson State 31-yard line. 
Two backs in the backfield with Footman. Lenoris Footman remains in at quarterback. And he's going to fake the handoff to Ragsdale. And Footman trying to turn the right corner. And he is brought down. Oh, man. You can't do that, man. You've got to be careful over there. Porter, okay. Porter trying to sling him out of bounds. Yeah, but he's very fortunate that time he didn't get a penalty. Well, he kind of let him go when he was on the sideline. Well, he had him when he was out of bounds. You can't do that. And this is not a position to feel that you want to commit that kind of foul. So a pickup of maybe three yards to the Jackson State 27-yard line. Jackson State defense again bending but not breaking in this ball game. Second down and about seven. Footman throws the screen pass. The catch is made inside the 10 down to the JSU nine-yard line. Great play by five Footman that time. I tell you what, he uh, has been off all day in this game, but he threw that ball real well. Looking at that play again, Footman threw it out to the right side, the screen. That's your boy Wolford over dangerous. there, number 10. He's that's, upset. That's Marquise Wolford. He's really upset they didn't call a penalty. They have it at the Jackson State nine-yard line. This was set up by the interception by Moore Cowell. Jackson State was on the move, and Moore Cowell threw an interception at the 23-yard line. So first down and goal for the Braves from the nine-yard line. Footman in the shotgun. He will take the snap, and Footman tries to take it in on his own, but he is brought down by Noble inside the five to the four-yard line. Yeah, good run that time. That was run all the way by the quarterback. Footman that time, he just got the football and ran to the right. He's, gonna, he's not going to pass it anymore. He's going to try to run it in. Three minutes to go in the third quarter. It's Jackson State 10, Alcorn 7. But the Braves on the move as they have it, second and goal from the Jackson State five-yard line. Make it the four-yard line. Footman back in the shotgun. Footman takes the snap. He's going to give it to Baker. Baker down to the two, and he is brought down again by Javancy Jones, who helps make the stop on that play. Yeah, good. good. Javancy Jones behind him and dragged him all the way, man. Good play that time by the defensive end, he's everywhere, I tell you that, number 29. This is the seventh play of this drive. It is third down and goal for Alcorn at the one-yard line. <laughs> well, this has been a fantastic soul bowl, as they call it. So here we go. We got Chapman back there. He's the up back. They give it to Baker, and he takes it in for the Braves touchdown. Yeah, it was too easy that time around. The fullback in the middle leading. And he broke it to the left side. You know, you can't keep him out of the, the end zone that many times. They're too good up front uh, to keep him out of the end zone. And they finally got a crack in the defense. Sam Alcorn uh, converted that turnover into points as they have taken the lead 13-10. I think we're having trouble with Sam's mic. But McGraney on to attempt the point after. A minute 59 to go. And this is Alcorn's first lead of the ball game the point after is good and the braves lead it 14 to 10 we're back after this on the tiger sports network you wouldn't buy gas without a car so why does verizon sell you data without a phone introducing ceasefire combos like combo number four the latest smartphone eight gigs of data at one total price that's 29 dollars a month less than verizon everything you need one total price ceasefire customer inspired ccspire.com slash combos now get a 150 dollars bill credit a free tablet and free activations with your new ceasefire combo what does it mean to be healthy it means finding the steps you take today that lead to a healthier tomorrow and knowing you have a partner on your wellness journey with the compassion of a cross and the security of a shield because at the end of the day it means you your health your life and all its possibilities blue cross and blue shield of mississippi live healthy live blue it's good to be blue A minute 59 to play in the third quarter. Alcorn has taken his first lead in the ball game, 
on that one-yard touchdown run by Aaron Baker, and the Braves lead it 14 to 10. That came as a result of an interception throw by Jaron Morcali. Now the Braves will kick it away. It is fielded in the end zone by Dan Williams. He'll take a knee, and Jackson State will bring it out to the 25. Yeah, you know, Jackson, they got to get the offense back rolling again and, you know, get some first down, maintain some possession of the football and uh, keep away from Alcorn State because their offense can run the football and they can score. So offensively, we need to get it down and get some points out of the drive. Alcorn 14, Jackson State 10. JSU has led for the entire way up until now. A nice crowd here at Memorial Stadium. What would you estimate this crowd to be, Will? I don't know, Rob. we got to be at least 35,000. I would think 35, 36, maybe 40. Uh, I don't see many empty seats around the stadium, even at the top on the other side. So Jackson State back on offense. New quarterback in the ball game, Jordan Williams. He's back in the shotgun. And Williams is going to call a timeout. Jordan Williams calls a timeout. He saw something that he didn't like, and we'll take one as well. Tigers down 14 10 back after this. Minute 59 to go in the third quarter. Jackson State trailing the Braves 14 to 10 after that one yard touchdown run by Aaron Baker. Now it's Jackson State's turn to respond to that touchdown. JSU was moving the ball very well a moment ago before Morikawa threw that interception. Now Jordan Williams in the game. He's back in the shotgun for Jackson State. He's going to hand it off to Ben Thomas. He was able to pick up about a yard or two on that play. Yeah, Alcorn's pretty tough front man's hard just to run straight at them like that and expect to get a lot of yards you're not gonna get a lot of yards like that got to get on the perimeter you got to get outside of them. that's a one-yard run on the play bringing up second and nine for Jackson State coming up on a minute to go here in the third quarter beautiful Saturday evening here in Jackson Mississippi second and nine Williams throws along the left side the screen pass the catch is made, and Dan Williams is pushed out of bounds. He may have picked up about three yards. Yeah, he went down. He could go a little further down than that. Uh, Jordan Williams threw the ball a little quick. He could get down. Dan Williams could go down about five or six more yards before he catches the football. We ain't starting to blow your stuff around? Well, it's, it's blowing. It's, it feels good, though. It's been hot all day today. Not like it was last week? Oh, man. Well, I tell you, that win was tough. I didn't believe it <laughs> until we went outside. You and T-Grave out there trying to do some something. <laughs> And I was not interested in standing out in that win. <laughs> All right, Jackson State has it at its own 31. Jordan Williams back to throw. He's going to take off. He has some room to run, but he's going to fire the oh, pass. Man. He was hit as he threw. It was incomplete. He was looking for Golston near midfield. I yeah. think he had some room to run, but he pulled I, up I, and I threw the I think he did, Rob, but he got, uh, got hit that time. He's lepping off, and I don't know. Williams got hurt last week. He didn't play against Prairie View, so we might not see him anymore. So Looks like his ankle, that's what the problem is. Jackson State goes three and out. And they're going to have to punt it away. Back deep for the Braves is Anthony Williams, Jr. He's standing back at his own 31-yard line, awaiting this Darcy Williamson punt. Williamson will be punting into the wind on this kick. Only 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Williamson gets it away. That's a low kick. It's fielded by... 
Williams at the 42, and he is brought down with 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, that's not a long punt that time, kind of short, and give a good field position for Alcorn State on this second drive here, uh, trying to get some more points on the board. So Alcorn will start from its own 41-yard line is where they spot it. Alcorn with a 14 to 10 lead. The Braves have trailed much of the ball game until a moment ago in the third quarter. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. First down and 10 for Alcorn. Footman remains in at quarterback for the Braves. They have two backs in the backfield. That's Baker and Ragsdale. Ragsdale in motion to the right behind the formation. Footman back to throw. He is in a lot of trouble. He managed to get it away. The catch is made. Uh, looked like it was on the ground to me, but uh, it was a good throw by Footman. And a lot of pass, a lot of pressure on him that time coming out of the backfield. That was a one-yard catch. He, he actually, he may have lost a yard. I think it is. On that catch. That was Baker, Aaron Baker, coming out of the backfield uh, on the short side of the field. So that's going to end the third quarter of play. The Alcorn Braves will go into the fourth quarter, clinging to a 14-10 lead. We're back after this on the Tigers Sports Network. I'm Michael Joe Cannon. Model year in savings continue at Cannon Nissan on the hill in South Jackson. I love my Canon Nissan Murano. It gets great gas mileage and it's a fantastic ride. It's true. Nobody beats a Canon deal. Nobody. Save thousands during the model year end savings event going on now at Canon Nissan. Friendly people, great prices. I love Canon Nissan. When the smoke clears, nobody beats a Canon deal. Nobody. There are three things I never miss. My anniversary, JSU home games, and my annual checkup. I see my doctor every year, even if I feel great, because I can't afford to get sick. My family needs me to stay healthy and strong. That yearly checkup catches little problems before they become big problems. So listen and learn, friend. Get that checkup. Call 888-815-2005 for your wellness checkup or visit UMMCHealth.com slash men from the Merle Evers Williams Institute at UMMC. So we start the fourth quarter of play. Jackson State trailing the Braves 14 to 10. The Sonic Boom playing the traditional, the show, as the show has been happening here at Memorial Stadium. This has been a fantastic football game. It has been a great game, Rob. Not surprising because every time we play Alcorn Jackson, they get together. It's going to be a good ball game because everybody wants to win this game. I keep telling the record stats to mean nothing. So it's second down and 10. For the Braves, they have it at their own 41-yard line, moving the ball from left to right. Footman remains in at quarterback for the Braves. They have a four-receiver set. Now a man in the motion to the left. That's Warford. And they're going to hand it off. Up the middle goes Ragdale. Ragsdale breaking tackles oh, and is brought boy. down inside the 45 to the 43. Well, I tell you what, Ragsdale that time broke off left, left guard, left tackle. And uh, we had to hang on really that time because he'd have been gone. Tell you what, Coach Hobson said, if he has a chance to play on Sundays, you agree? Yeah, I agree. I think he's that tight back. He can make somebody's ball club next year. Maybe Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> I would love to have him. There goes Ragsdale again as he powers his way inside the 40 down to the JSU 39-yard line. You know, Rob, this guy reminds me of last week when we had Abair running for preview. The second, fourth quarter, uh, we just couldn't do anything with the ground game. He just ran on us. But uh, Ragsdale is not as shifty as, as uh, Abair. Yeah, Abair, but uh, he is more powerful. He's bigger. So Footman again in the shotgun. Gives it to Ragsdale. They keep feeding Ragsdale. Up the middle he goes. Ragsdale again with a big run up to the 22-yard line of Jackson State. Yeah, the offense line now is kind of having their way uh, with Jackson State's uh, front four. They're doing a good job blocking them. So we have a timeout on the field. We'll call a timeout with 14.04 to go. Jackson State down 14-10, but the Braves again on the move. Back after this.
14 14 0 4 to go in the fourth quarter. Jackson State trailing Alcorn 14 10 in other games in the Bayou Classic. Grambling trailing Southern six to nothing in the first quarter. Oh, I'm not surprised. You know, like you say, maybe Grambling had nothing to do. They were wrapped up the West, but they'll come back. They're going to play just like this ball game. A lot of pride and a lot of stuff goes in this game. It doesn't matter about the records, man. I'll tell you. First down and 10 for the Braves from the Jackson State 22 yard line. Alcorn with a 14 10 lead. And again, they give it to Ragsdale, but that play is blown up. By Keontre Anderson, yeah. he jumped all on the back. Uh, that was uh, Baker on the carry. Yeah, Anderson no jumped. Game. Anderson got in the backfield that time and uh, beat the blocker in front of him. Stopped that for a little short game. Keontre Anderson with a tackle for the loss. He's going to return to Jackson State next year. So Jackson State has a great nucleus to build on. Yeah, we really do, Rob. I, all those guys be back next year, and uh, we didn't lose many players from the uh, from the senior class this year. So we should be in good shape next year. I'll tell you the truth. Second down, they say that Baker picked up one yard on that carry. So Footman back in the shotgun again here on second and long. Baker, he loses the football. It's on the ground. And, oh, they fight for it. Looked like uh, Footman may have recovered Jackson State, saying they have the football. So they're trying to unravel this pile. This would be a huge break for JSU. It would be, man. And they need to just move out of the way so they can find out. It's Jackson State's football. Big break for Jackson State that time. Wow, Alcorn was going in to extend the lead, but a fumble on the play, and the Tigers recover. Anderson got it, 14. He got the football. Sam, can you pick us up now? <laughs> yeah. I think he may need some batteries in that microphone. Sam, is he still here? Yeah, he's still there. Man. Jackson State recovers the fumble, and the Tigers will have it. First down and 10. From its own 29-yard line. <laughs> 13, 15 to go here in the fourth quarter. Jackson State down 14-10, but the Tigers have the football. Moore Cower remains in at quarterback. Fires along the left side. Dan Williams makes the catch. A pickup of about six yards before being pushed out of bounds at the 35. Good play that time by McCowey. He's back in, and he threw the ball outside to Dan Williams for a first down. You know, you got to give Dan Williams some catches, man. I mean, he needs to just throw some balls to him, maybe 10 or 15 on this drive alone. Jackson State with only 139 yards of offense, all for 218. They go with the ground game, and a big pickup this time by Bates near midfield. A pickup of 20 yards on the carry. Good blocking, got point of attack on the right side, and Bates just exploded through the line of scrimmage on that play. Bates runs to the 48-yard line. It is first down and 10 for Jackson State. JSU still in this ball game, only down 14-10. More Cowie, the quarterback. In the pistol formation, Morikawi takes a snap, back to throw. Throws along the right side. A man is open. That's Golston. A pickup of about seven yards into Alcorn territory at the 47. Good play by Morikawi, the quarterback, Jack State. He looked to the left to Dan Williams, went back to Golston to the right, and completed for a seven-yard game on that play. Jackson State in Alcorn's territory. They mark it at the 46-yard line. It is second down. And about four for Jackson State, maybe second and five. Morikawa again back in the shotgun for JSU. Takes a snap. Has time. Throws along the left side. It is incomplete ah. right through the hands of Dan Williams. Yeah, Dan Williams took his eyes off the football that time. Uh, he thought he was going to try to run with it before he caught it, man. He got to catch it first, and you know that. And that's, that's concentration there when you're missing one like that. He did that against uh, in the game against Prairie View. Yeah, he did. He got to catch the ball first before he tried to run. He's a nice runner. Crowd. I don't think he has been quite 100% since he had a bout with yeah. the flu a couple of weeks ago. That's down. You're right. So Goldston comes out of the ball game. In comes Mole. It is third down and five for Jackson State at the Alcorn 47-yard line. Jackson State down 14-10, under 12 to go here in the fourth quarter. And we have a stoppage of play. I think this is a timeout by Alcorn. No. Alcorn oh. calls a timeout. 11.49 to go. Braves lead at 14 to 10. Back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. Thanks for nothing. 
The insurance company keeps giving us a runaround. What are we going to do? You guys need to call Richard Schwartz. Sugar Ray Leonard? Yes. You guys need help from a fighter. Our attorney Richard Schwartz, when you're hurt in a car wreck, put some power in your corner. I'll help with your doctor bills, car repairs, and I'll fight to get you everything you deserve. He is a fighter, and I'm Sugar Ray Leonard, so I know a thing or two about fighting. When you're hurt in a car wreck, don't take on the insurance company alone. One call, that's all. What does it mean to be healthy? It means finding the steps you take today that lead to a healthier tomorrow and knowing you have a partner on your wellness journey with the compassion of a cross and the security of a shield. Because at the end of the day, it means you, your health, your life, and all its possibilities. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy. Live blue. It's good to be blue. Eleven forty nine to go. A turnover by the Braves has given Jackson State new life with eleven forty nine left in the fourth quarter. You know, I keep telling you, when you take your headphones off, yeah. it, it sounds like you're jostling around. I, I am, I'm jostling you around. <laughs> but uh, now where's Sam Reynolds? Are you, Sam? Where's Sam Reynolds? I, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. You, okay, he got his mic fixed. Yeah, I got you, I got you. Okay, third down and five for JSU as we return to action. More Cowie back in the shotgun. Alcorn showing blitz. They fake the hand on Moore Cowery. Dumps it across the middle. It's incomplete. He was looking for Peyton. He just couldn't hang on. Yeah, he had the right guy. That was the right throw. That's the right read for the quarterback. He hit the tight end right across the middle. Wow, you don't want to give Alcorn the ball back either, man. No, he got a punt here. But if you pin him deep, you may be in good shape. Still plenty of time left in this ball game. Oh, no question about that. Uh, they was on the drive last time when they fumbled, you know, so. I hate to give it back to him, but you got to in a situation like this. So Jackson State cannot take advantage of the Alcorn turnover, and they will punt the ball away. But barring an incredible return, they should pin Alcorn back deep because Williamson can place the ball inside the 10. Williamson with the kick. It's a low kick. It's going to bounce at the 10. It bounces at the 5, and this is going to be a great punt. Great punt. As JSU downs it down to the four-yard line. Good coverage that time, and you're right. He can place the football. The punter for Jackson State did an outstanding job on that play. So, Sam, Jackson State, the defense back on the field with a chance to stop all corn deep down in this area. Yes, indeed. The defense is back on the field, but they are without Brandon Madden. Uh, he was escorted to the locker room uh, just at the end of the third quarter, and uh, he will not return to this ball game. He was the, uh, one of the cornerbacks, so I wonder if that's going to have an impact on the Jackson State secondary. So, Willie, how long do you go? You know, you're up 14-10. If you coach Hobson, you're just going to keep the starters in there for the rest of this game? Well, I, I, you know, I told, first top of the show, we said uh, they're going to try to win this ball game. So, I don't think nothing's changed so far. <laughs> I don't know why you can't change stuff. Footman remains in at quarterback. He is in the shotgun. He's standing in the end zone. They go with the jet sweep. And he's going to be tackled. Oh, no, he breaks out of a tackle in the end zone. Oh, oh boy. this guy's good, man. This guy's good. <laughs> That's Wolfram. Yeah, he can, he's run. He was in the end zone, and they had him back there, man, and just couldn't hold on to him. Wow, who right had there. him? That was Sean Bishop. He had him in the yep. end zone, but uh, <laughs> Stacy Noble wraps him up at the two. He he, and, and he did lose two yards or a yard back to the one-yard line. That was a big play because you get the safety plus to get the ball back. So that could have been a big play for Jack State. Second down and 11 for the Braves. They are in deep trouble back at their own one yard line footman back in the shotgun and they give it to ragsdale and he fights out of the end zone and manages to take it to the four yard line yeah that was kind of iffy on that play a little heading off to the left side and ragsdale really had good blocking to be able to get to about almost to the five yard line big play here for jackson state defense this is a huge play because if you stop him here you stand to get it back in really good field position so it's third down and nine for the Braves from their own four-yard line. Footman, the quarterback, he's in the shotgun, and he's standing in the end zone. Jackson State showing a four-man front. And they fake the handoff, and Footman is going to break it to the outside, and Footman has the first down oh, as he boy. takes it across the 15 to the 16. Yeah, that's one thing about this quarterback, Oklahoma State Footman. He's not a passer. He's a runner. And he faked that time inside handoff, kept the ball himself to the left side. Devance Jones made the tackle, but he picked up the first down. So Alcorn out of the shadow 
of its own end zone. Under 10 minutes to go. That was a huge play and a huge. First down for the Braves, but they still have it at their own nine yard line. Footman, the quarterback, four receivers set for the Braves. We got Baker in the backfield with Footman. Footman takes a snap, fakes the handoff, and he throws down the left side. It is incomplete. Alcorn wants a flag, but a good what. defensive stand by Jemison, who was yeah. back defending. Yeah, he did a good job that time, really, right the receiver. He went for the football. He can go for the ball. Great play by Jemison on that play. Lamarvin Ashley, he wants a, a flag. Yeah. But a great defensive play by Jemison. Second down and 10 for Alcorn from its 15-yard line. Footman again back in the shotgun for the Braves. Footman takes a snap, rolls to his left. Here comes the pressure. He throws. It is incomplete as he threw it out of bounds. Back defending for Jackson State was Porter. He was looking for Brandon Vizel. Or a vessel. Yeah. She also had to feel that. No room to work that time. Sideline really helped us in that play. Had nowhere to go. Third down now. Third down and 10. The Braves with the ball at its own 15 yard line. 9.21 left to go in this ball game. Alcorn with a 14 10 lead over Jackson State. This is Jackson State's last game of the year, but Alcorn still has some business to take care of. Footman again back in the shotgun for the Braves. Footman takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. Footman hit as he throws. It is incomplete. Incomplete. And Jackson State has stopped the Braves as they will bring on the punting unit. Yeah, Terrell right there on the back of him. And that's one thing about Footman. He's not a real passer. Uh, he's a good running quarterback, but not a passing quarterback. And I'm sure they're going to work on that this spring. So a great job by the JSU defense as the Braves will punt it away. McRaney, who handles the punting duties as well, will be standing back at his own one-yard line. Mole standing back at midfield. And this is a good kick. But it's going to take a JSU bounce and bounce to the 40-yard line. So great field position for Jackson State with 9.06 to go here in the fourth quarter. We're back after this on the Tiger Sports Network. Six to go. Jackson State trailing Alcorn 14 to 10. This is a game that many thought Alcorn <laughs> said that they would put 80 points on the board. They need to really <laughs> stop doing that because last year they said they were going to break the clock. Who said that? That was some of the Alcorn. I didn't hear nobody say that. I, you know, I don't know anybody. In a game like this, why would you think they're going to put some 80 points on the board? I'm not saying I thought they oh, would. I thought you it. said that. I'm saying that that's what was being said. That was last year. But that's neither here nor there. Okay? Because you don't believe anything, I'll tell you anyway. <laughs> but Jackson State has it first down at his own 40-yard line. More Coward remains in. No, actually, it's Jordan Williams is the new quarterback for JSU. As the Tigers keep it on the ground and give it to Bates, a pickup of one yard before being brought down. 
Yeah, McCauley's coming in now. Bay, Jordan Weed just stayed in one play on that one handoff. He gave it to Bates. We have not mentioned Robert Johnson's name in this game. He is not playing. He is on the sideline. He is nursing a shoulder injury. He's going to have surgery on his shoulder following the season. So we wish him nothing but the best. Second down and nine for JSU from his own 41. Trailing 14 to 10. Morikawa back to throw, and he's going to be sacked. Sacked back at the 36-yard line. A loss of four yards on the play. Well, Alcorn came on a blitz that time, and they had too many people. We couldn't pick them all up. And when that happens, man, we're going to lose the ball. On, almost McCowie got smothered. Lucky he didn't fumble on that play. Exactly right. Coming up on eight minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Jackson State trailing Alcorn 14 to 10. It is senior day here at JSU, and Jackson State's going to lose a lot of great uh, seniors in this in this uh, from this team. Yeah, a lot of guys coming back though, Rob. It's not going to hurt us drastically. I think we'd be in good shape uh, on both offense and defense. JSU at his own 36-yard line here on third down and long. More Cowie back to throw. He's going to roll to his right. A flag is down. It's going to be holding on Jackson State as the catch was made at the 44-yard line. Boy, you saw it right there. Is that? Uh, Hold him right there at the point, right in front of the fishes, man. Like Sam says, clear as day. <laughs> <laughs> now, why is it? Holding, number 75, offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. That was holding and a tackle. Yeah, he took him down that time. Took 94 down, completed to the ground. That was Christian Marshall, the 6'5 junior out of Columbus, Ohio. Call for the flag on uh, JSU. Holding on the Tigers. And it's going to push him back to the 25 yard line. So it is third down and 24 to go for Jackson State. They give it to Bates on the draw play, and not much for Bates as he takes it across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Well, of course, McCauley won't take a chance that time of making a mistake, uh, giving the ball back to Alcorn State uh, deep in their own territory. So they're going to punt the football and see if they can play some more defense. The defense has been doing well here so far today. Coming up on seven minutes to go, Sam, here in the fourth quarter. So in 14 seconds, and uh, Jackson State's going to have to put some off, some uh, some some real estate here. Okay. Come to fourth down, his defense is going to have to get this ball back. All right, Williamson will punt it away. A fair catch call by the Braves at the 35-yard line with seven minutes to go. It's Alcorn 14, Jackson State 10. Again, we say congratulations to the JSU volleyball team. They wrapped up the SWAC championship. For the first time since 2012, and they are headed to the NCAA volleyball tournament. Jackson State trying to end this football season on a good note. You ever played volleyball? I beg your pardon. Did you ever play volleyball? Uh, no, I did not. You didn't? No, I didn't. I, I didn't play volleyball. I used to play. You used to? I played in the, at the park, but that's what I'm talking about. Not on the regular Jackson State type team. No, no, I didn't. Just in the no, play, no, playground. No, no volleyball. What did you do in playground? Shoot marbles or what else you did? <laughs> I cut up on the playground. Yeah, check on you. That's what I did. Okay. And first down for the Braves from the 35. Footman is going to call his own number. Look at him eluding tackles. Footman has room to run. Footman takes it across midfield. Footman is going to take it inside the JSU 30 down to the 28-yard line. Now, that's what Footman can do. You know, he can run with the football. He's not a great passer, as we have seen all day here today. But once he gets in open field, he can run the football. There's no doubt about that. So, all corn back in Jackson State's territory at the Tigers' 28-yard line. After that run by Lenoris Footman. And you were right, Willie. You said that's the yeah. worst thing that could have happened to the swag was for Gibbs, Gibbs to get hurt. Get hurt. That's right. <laughs> Alcorn keeping it on the ground. Not much there for Baker before being brought down by Javancy Jones and Cornelius Henderson. Yeah, they did a good job that time. And uh, good penetration that time on the left side of our defensive line. That's the thing about it. They're going to test the line to see whether or not they still ready to play. Second down and 10 for the Braves from the JSU 28-yard line. Alcorn with a 14-10 lead with six minutes to go. The Braves captured the lead after an interception by Morikawa. Alcorn turned it into points and grabbed his first lead of the game, which they lead now 14-10. to 10. It is second down and 10 for the Braves 
from the JSU 28. Footman fires. It is incomplete. Boy, he threw behind the receiver that time, cutting on the inside on the slant route. And uh, Footman going to have to work on his passing. Boy, I'm glad he's not passing good today because he's had a lot of guys open, but he just can't hit anybody. Lenores Footman, a six foot, 181 pound sophomore out of Monticello, Florida. He is leading the all corn offense right now. He wears number 17 for the Braves. Third down and 10 for all corn. Footman back in the shotgun. Jackson State showing blitz. Footman recognizes it. He steps up to the line. 16 seconds on the play clock. 5.43 left in this ball game. Alcorn didn't realize they would be in a dogfight in this one. Footman takes a snap. Back to throw. Has time. Throws. The catch is made at the 25. And I don't know a if. A little short, Rob. It's going to be a decision by Coach Hobson here. It's going to be a little short of the first down. i tell you that now. Warford is real close. He eluded the tackle by Kwame Bowen. And he's going to be short of the first down, about two yards shy of the first down. And here comes Hayden McGraney. He's missed two field goals today yeah. in this ball game. Some chip shots. And I think Coach Hopton wanted him to try this one to get his confidence back. So normally would go for the fourth down on this with one yard, two yards to go. This would be a 37-yard attempt. If I'm off one, I'm going for it here. There's a snap. Ball placed down. The kick is up. It's long enough, and it is no good again. Yeah. He missed it again. I told you I would have I gone for it. Well, the coach trying to get his confidence back, I guess. That was a bad snap. If that's a bad snap, they'll throw your timing off when you have a bad snap with the ball. Back after this, Jackson State still with life. Right now is the best time to upgrade your home or business and lower your energy bill with the help of Atmos Energy. As an Atmos Energy customer in Mississippi, you'll save up to $400 with a smart choice rebate when you buy a qualifying high-efficiency furnace. Stay warm and cozy this winter for less with natural gas. Call 877-616-6267 or visit atmosenergy.com slash smartchoiceMS for details. Atmos Energy, your natural gas company. You wouldn't buy gas without a car. So why does Verizon sell you data without a phone? Introducing C Spire combos, like combo number four. The latest smartphone, eight gigs of data at one total price that's $29 a month less than Verizon. Everything you need, one total price. C Spire, customer inspired. CCSpire.com slash combos. Now get a $150 bill credit, a free tablet, and free activations with your new C Spire combo. So Hayden McGraney misses his third field goal attempt in this ball game, and that gives Jackson State the ball at the 20-yard line. 4.50 left to go. This is turning out to be a very suspenseful soul bowl. This is the 80th okay. meeting between these two teams. Jackson State leads the series 44 wins, 33 losses, and two ties. So Moore Cowell remains in at quarterback. Well, this is Jordan Williams. This is Jordan Williams. Jordan Williams in now, yeah. And he fires it out to Jabari Payton. He makes the catch, and Payton didn't seem to think he was down. I don't think he was down. I don't think he was down. Oh, no. he I, had. He could have scored a touchdown. Wow, they're going to say he was down. That was a quick whistle. We're looking at the replay here, and his knee was down. They were right. His knee was down at the 35-yard line. Good call by the officials. Nonetheless, it was a pickle of three yards by JSU. Jackson State with it at its own 26-yard line. A flag down, and again, the throw to Peyton. The catch is made. Peyton fighting out of some tackles. Peyton dragging the pile. Peyton at midfield before he's knocked down. At the, well, he had one, two, three, four. He drug four all-court players. Well, Peyton, you know, the unfortunate thing about Peyton's a senior, and he's just trying to you know, make a point here one, that I should have been catching the ball all year. Two, three, four, five. All corn defenders on his back as he dragged them all the way to midfield. And he got up and did the Superman pose. What a play by Peyton. Yeah. Reminded me of another Peyton that played here years ago. Who, Walter Peyton? That's exactly right. And Eddie. And Eddie. So Jackson State has it at midfield, just shy of midfield. 
at the at their own 49. Jordan Williams, the quarterback. Williams fires a man open at the Braves 45, and he takes it inside the 40 down to the all-court 36-yard line. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Jordan Williams come in here. He's a freshman, but uh, he has really shown a lot of poise and uh, made some good plays here on this drive. Jordan Williams. See, he's a threat to run, and that put yeah. scared all corner. Puts the pressure on the defense. As he threw it to Golson, and the officials are discussing something right now, Will. After the play, personal foul, late hit, number 58, offense. Oh, yard man, you got to kid me. A late hit on Jackson State. How do you get that when you're on offense? That's a lame oh, Morris. Man. That's terrible. He's a junior from Oakland, California, and poor JSU had it at the all 35, and this is what will kill you. Yeah, that's what hurt us. Well, Sam, not a good play by Jackson State. Not a good play. It's crucial. This is a crucial time in the ball game with 3.39 left. This is where the rubber meets the road. Mano Imano, offensive unit on the field right now. Got to get a first down, and uh, got to keep this drive alive and put some points on the board and get a win. Was he, was he talking Spanish? Yeah, it sounded like, Mel, sound like Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> so Jackson State pushed the ball right back on their side of the field at the 48-yard line. Wow, after that penalty. Jordan Williams is going to take off. He can run with the football. He's got to be careful not to fumble. But he takes That's it right. up inside uh, Alcorn territory at the Braves' 45-yard line. Yeah, he's, he's a, an exciting player. I'll tell he you is. That. He's a threat to run the football. I'm, I like to see him passing. Uh, if he becomes a good passer, he's going to be a threat next year. Alcorn has its heart in its throat right now because Jackson State is on the move with under three minutes to go. Tigers trail 14 to 10. Jordan Williams, the quarterback, fires to the left side. The catch is made by Dan Williams near the Braves' 40-yard line before he is pushed down. He may have enough for the first down. Yeah, it's going to be, I think so, with the fish on the other side. If they take his spot, it's going to be a first down. Dan Williams makes the catch right at the first down marker. They're not signaling yet. Good throw and by now. Now they say it's a first down. Good throw by Jordan Williams that time all the way to the outside. We're impressed with his throw. Wow. Jackson State moving the football. Under three minutes to go. 230 and counting. Tigers down 14 to 10. And they're going to wait before the timeout all corner. Timeout all corner. Timeout by the Braves, Time 226 out. to go. All corn. We're back Their after this charge. on the Tiger Sports Network. Two twenty-six left to go here in the fourth quarter. Jackson State trailing 14 to 10, but the Tigers have the ball and they are on the move. At the half, you saw two excellent bands and two excellent performances uh, here on this football field. And uh, these bands and these uh, the, the, the performer the performers worked really hard at halftime. And uh, I think there was something said about one of the members of the Alcorn band, which uh, we apologize for. Not from us, but uh, as a member of Jackson State University, we apologize. But uh, I thought I, I said that the Alcorn band was really, really good, didn't I? I yeah, you did. You always say that. Yeah, I was waiting to see. Yeah, it. they was good. No doubt about that. <laughs> but you know, Rob, this is an important drive here for Jackson State, man. And see, we can move it in to try to get a touchdown out of this drive. JSU at the Alcorn 42-yard line. Jordan Williams back to throw. Here comes a pressure. It is intercepted. Oh, did he catch it? Well, he dropped it. Wow. Uh, I think he dropped it. He was there. Jordan Williams seen the screen pass to the outside. But the defensive back, Alcorn State, read it perfectly. Eric Foster. Foster, yeah. 
Almost had that for an interception. Boy, that would have been the end of our drive. He caught that. That would have been the end of the ball game. Jackson State with only one timeout left. Alcorn with one. It's 219 left to play. Second down and 10. Here at this nice crowd of fans at Memorial Stadium. Jackson State with it at the Braves 42 yard line. Jordan Williams, the quarterback, takes the snap. Williams steps up in the pocket. Williams is going to take off, and he is brought down inside the 40 to the Alcorn 39 yard line. A saving tackle yeah. by the Braves. That was a great tackle that time. He was on his way. I thought she was. If Jordan was going to get away from that linebacker, he could have gone in for a touchdown himself, probably. So I'll tell you what, I think that was 47. That was Michael Hearns, the linebacker out of Cleveland, Mississippi. Third down and seven for JSU. Williams throws, is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Jackson State got to go for it. We cannot uh, punt the football with 142 left. Uh, I think we're going to go for the first down here. 142 left to go. It is fourth down and seven. This is the ball game. Jackson State winning at the Braves' 39-yard line. What play will Timmy Chain call here? Rob, I don't know, man. Uh, boy, I tell you what, he called a lot of plays today. The screen to the outside is not good against this team. Uh, really, to me, I, I don't even see the tight end in there. I was going to say tight end down the seam. But I don't think Peyton is in the game at this time. Four receivers set, three to the left, one to the right for JSU. There's a snap. Williams back to throw. Williams fires. It is incomplete. No flag down, and that may do it. Yeah, a good coverage by Alcorn State. But uh, he was trying to hit to the outside to receive it to the outside. But uh, I, I don't think that uh, that was going to be completed. Wow, Sam. So a valiant effort by Jackson State. Just not meant to be. Yeah. Now all Alcorn has to do now is take a knee because Jackson State can only stop the clock one time. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's a good ball game. Jackson State played well. I, I thought they had a chance to to try to win this ball game, but uh, I guess a team like Alcorn State, Rob, you got to score when you get the chance, man. We miss a lot of opportunity to score, and every time you get to get that ball, you got to try to put some on the board. Jackson State did not score on offense other than a 27-yard field goal by Ryan Deasing. JSU had its opportunities in this ball game, but th what they yeah. did was Alcorn came into this game averaging about 45 points a game, only got 14 today. Well, you're not surprising, you know, uh, in a rivalry game like this, I'm not surprised that Jackson State stepped up and played a great game here today. Alcorn Braves, the Swack East champs, will go into the Swack title game with a record of 8-3 with this win today. They say 12 men on the field yeah, for the Braves. Yeah, they put 15 out there now. Because, you know, <laughs> like you said, we can't stop it one time. So, you know how that is, Rob. I thought that Jack State played well today. We just offensively, we didn't click and do some of the things we should have done. And I got right back to Peyton, the tight end. I just thought that all year I've been saying to get it to him, man. The guy's a great athlete. can catch the football. We never did. Braves take a knee, and that will just about do it. Sam, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Uh, <laughs> Jackson State calls his last timeout with a minute 32 left to go. We'll be back after this. What does it mean to be healthy? It means finding the steps you take today that lead to a healthier tomorrow and knowing you have a partner on your wellness journey with the compassion of a cross and the security of a shield. Because at the end of the day, it means you, your health, your life, and all its possibilities. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Mississippi. Live healthy. Live blue. It's good to be blue. When you're looking for your happy place, there's only one place you need to go. Riverwalk Casino Hotel. Enjoy thousands of square feet filled with all your favorite slots and table games. Then savor the freshest flavors in Vicksburg with delicious restaurants like Magnolia Hill Buffet, Rockies, and Smiley's. And when you need a break from all the excitement, relax in one of our comfortable hotel rooms right off the casino floor. Find everything you love and more at Riverwalk Casino Hotel. Vicksburg's happy place. Must be 21 to gamble.
A minute 32 to go. Fans making their way to the exit. The Alcorn fans still here at Memorial Stadium to savor this victory and get a little bit of revenge from last year's loss to Jackson State. But I don't think uh, anyone here thought the score would be this close. Well, you know, I was, I'm was i not really surprised. I'm surprised we didn't move the ball better offensively. But Jackson, the Alcorn got a great defense. But, you know, Rob, a game like this, man, we're going to play. And we played a good ball game here defensively today. Uh, played about as well as we could play, really, in this ball game. Just came up a little short. Uh, but I'm encouraged. I think we got something to build on. Uh, I think Derek McCall's done a good job at putting this team, making this team continue to fight. You know, a lot of guys could leave and give up, and we had somebody left. We have some other guys could have left, you know, to figure this over. Uh, we can't win anything, and it's going to probably be a change at the coaching position. And uh, you know how it is. But they kept the team together. They kept fighting, and they really fought hard uh, this week and last week. Parade Bridge just got away from the second half. Yeah, absolutely. Coach McCall did a wonderful job of keeping this team together. He was thrust into the head coaching position midway through the season. Didn't know if the players would rebel against that, but yeah. he managed to keep them together. And, um, man, they played well. They played well in, uh, after he was named interim head coach. Of course, they lost to Alabama A&M. Right. And uh, you had the, um, the the bizarre situation with the clarion ledger saying they didn't want to cover jackson state anymore and you had all of this stuff surrounding this team and it's a wonder they won any more games after that yeah you're right but they defeated mississippi valley defeated pine bluff defeated texas southern so um we are hats off to coach mccall and this team yeah they, and they played this awful team tough yeah they did they did get them all they wanted to tell you the truth man so uh just had to give they take a hat off to them man they gave a good effort but Alcorn got a good team. They're going to represent the East Well in the SWAC Championship game next week. We say congratulations to Coach Jay Hobson of the Alcorn Braves, a super nice guy, man. I've been knowing him for a long time, and uh, my hat is off to him and this Alcorn State football team. We'll be back with more after this on the Tigers Sports Network. <laughs> 